Alright guys, uh, what's going on? Welcome to the probably one of the final loader parts. This is where we're going to combine uh, making network calls and loaders together. So one of the things I've actually done here is I've created a very simple network call which just reads JSON from uh, GitHub and gives me a list of all my watch my call it uh, all my repo names. So that's it there. Ta da! Okay, so the library I'm using to do the network calls, by the way, is just called Crossbow. Uh, it's basically an extension of uh, Volley, and that's that. So, let's make an actual uh, networking loader. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create um, a repo loader. And I'll show you the advantages of this before we actually get anywhere. Let's, let's stop this for a second. Let's just actually show what happens when we rotate this. So as you can see, when it rotates, right, and it's very slow at rotating. But what's actually happening, see where I look, there's an empty screen and then the stuff comes in. So what we want to do is, because we've already got the data and we're rotating, we're going to use the loader like a cache to handle it. Because the loader, like in the async task loader, loads asynchronously with the async task. So we could use a loader combined with the crossbow library or any networking library if you want or your own custom one whichever way you want to handle that caching for us so let's create our repo loader and we're just going to extend loader okay and our type is a list of strings okay oh string okay so oh, it's, it's copying docs for me Okay, so now we've got our, our loader. So the first thing we're going to do is we have to override on start loading, on stop loading, on reset. And I think that's it. Let me just double check something here. It's uh, docs. on force load, that's the one I'm looking for. And then there's on abandon as well, which is where you, you shut down. So we will put on on abandon. There's no need for that yet. So here's our main set of callbacks. So essentially what we want to do is, our on start loading is going to be the same as our string loader. Our on force load is going to do the network call. On stop loading is going to stop the network call, okay? And then on reset is going to. Uh, no, hang on a minute. On reset is going to stop the network call for us, okay? So we're going to create a tag, first of all. Uh, the tag now is strictly for. Uh, God damn it. Is strictly for volley, okay? This is just because. Um, It doesn't matter what, it just has to be, you know. The tag is strictly for volley so that it can cancel requests on the fly. Anyway, so let's get cracking. So on start loading, we want our data cache. We're actually just going to copy the on start loading directly from here because we don't need to actually do anything. Now these on start methods, actually, if we uh, jump up to these, to the overrides, they're just empty methods in the loader. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then we're going to get our cached data. A lot of this is very similar to what we had before. Same caching structure. Okay. And then our deliver result. Actually, I'll just copy that as well. No need to get all zany about it. Okay. So now we're good to go. So I'm just going to create a request queue because that's the way I have uh, Volley works. Q, Q equals crossbow dot get, get context dot get request Q. Okay. So now we have our Q. So in on force load, what we're going to do is we're going to have start request. In on stop. Uh, 
we're going to hang on, let me just quickly check something here I'm a little confused myself sometimes the loaders can still confuse me I've jumped into the source for uh... I Okay, so we don't actually cancel it there. We'll cancel it in on reset, okay? Okay, and then we're just going to wrap this with uh, if is started. Yeah, the reason we're just we're just putting a double check here just to make sure that you know just in case, uh, it just just guarantees that it can only deliver in the started state when it's uh, still valid. So let's make a request. So it's a request. The strings request the strings new listener you know usual stuff new error listener q dot add request so that will start off a request That's amazing and then we're going to just type in our request list strings dot set tag and we're just going to set our tag of tag okay good stuff now before this we just want to say cancel all with our tag so the reason we're doing this is um we're just going to cancel any old running requests and start a new request in on request or on reset if we jump up to this it's an empty method so Colin super doesn't do anything we can just say cancel all and that's it so we're just going to put a log in here so we can see what's going on so watch this we say going to say requesting new data and essentially instead of returning a string loader i'll actually just get rid of this this is just to test the loader we're going to say um repo loader and our cast has to be different because it's technically not a thing and we'll get rid of the button no need for the button okay in fact there's no need for any of this we can just bin the variable so what we should see now is we should see the loader load the data first time and then when we rotate the device the data will still be in the loader so the request won't rerun and we'll be able to keep our data around after rotation so let's hit run and see what happens bum, 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 bum. Come on, Gradle, do your stuff. There we go. Jesus Christ, Gradle, you took your sweet time. Okay, so I've made an idiot out of myself. We're not doing anything in response. You have to call deliver result. If we don't call deliver result, this doesn't get called. Ta da! So loaders by default also here. All this stuff runs on the main thread. Obviously, the request runs on a background thread. So yeah, we have to call or deliver response, otherwise we won't get any load. And then the error listener could maybe return an empty set of strings, or you could maybe have a loader result class, which is a boolean in it saying you know is successful or something. And there we go, the loader's there. So as you can see, we have our log here saying requesting new data. So if I cause this to rotate, no log, and our data is here. It's 
So as you can see, perfect, absolutely perfect. We have our data being cached internally by the loader. The main activity doesn't give a damn. It doesn't need to you know, parcel the data and recreate it and allocate more objects to do serialization and all the crazy stuff. It doesn't need to do any of that nonsense. It just needs to go, loader, give me my data. And the load finish, away we go. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So you can combine that with the methods thing so you can actually have these paging as well if you wanted. So instead of returning a list of strings, you could return some kind of model with like a page number, successful, and then a list of data. And then you could, you know, assemble the pages in order. Uh, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with this. But as you can see, boom. Absolutely flawless. And that is loaders in a nutshell. Super powerful, super cool, and loaders are amazing when you know how to use them. And that's it, guys, for this series. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned a little bit about loaders. And I'll see you next time.